Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. Some people like to live in the past. They're full of memories, always looking behind. For example, when they are in Canada, they're always remembering that wonderful Mexican vacation when it was sunny, not drab and dark like here, where people were nice, not boring and rude like here. But when they go there, they're always longing for, oh, could I have a poutine? Isn't there people that speak English? <laughs> The current reality is never as good as those memories that they have. And then, there are those people that live ahead. Some of them waiting for that next big thing that will change their life forever. Not like right now. On the other side of the coin, those people Fretting the future, something terrible will happen. There's always something bad coming. On one hand, one side lives looking for that unattainable future, unreachable. On the other hand, the other side are not looking forward for the future. Let's not bring the future. And finally, there are people that live of regrets. Neither in the past or the future. Just what could have been. And what could have been is always, always better than what it really is. The common constant among this group of people is that they cannot enjoy the present. Focused on the future, focused on the past, focused on some imaginary time, but they cannot enjoy the present. When I was eight years old, my maternal grandmother died. But I didn't cry. I wasn't even sad. That made me feel guilty. She was a great woman. I spent my after school with her while my mom was working. And it really felt bad that I couldn't cry and that I wasn't sad, even sad. But finally, when I was 21 years old, my maternal, my paternal grandmother died. And we were there at the funeral, everybody laughing, remembering her jokes. She was the funniest woman I ever met. She was always laughing, she was always making me laugh, she had always that wit on, on her. And I realized at that moment that I hadn't cried because I had spent a great time with both of them. That reflection made me understand that the only time that matters is here, now. The only time you have to live is the present. That is the only time that we can control. And here, let's have a show of hands. Who thinks that we can change the past? <laughs> <laughs> okay, other than Kevin, <laughs> we have consensus that we cannot change the past. Sure, we have to keep our, our eyes on the past. Otherwise, how would we learn? But we have to do it in perspective. Just if you close your eyes, imagine the Niagara River. I think, and I hope, that you'll agree with me, that it is better to see the river flowing and see the, and see the falls than jumping right into it. That distance gives us a better perspective than yeah. That being inside. <clears throat> now, can we control the future? Yes. I got a jazz. 
Can you, yes? Sure. No? Sure. Anybody for no? Impact, for a maybe? Not control. Mm -hmm. God control. Mm -hmm. That is a tricky question. <laughs> because we cannot control the future. Really. We can plan. But at best, the plan is our expectation that what will happen. Of course, planning is better than not planning. It's important to picture a perfect future, that fantasy future, and work very hard to achieve it. But we should never stop enjoying the road that will take us there, wherever there is, because I can assure you, there is going to be different than what you think it is. And I see that I'm almost out of time, so I would like to leave you with a little bit of my personal philosophy, the way I like to live. The past is our teacher. The future is our guide. But the present, the present is us. That's our life. That's what we have to live with. So let's live it in a way that we won't have any regrets.